It's taken Japan by storm, and now it's ready to conquer the globe. This is Bushido, the toughest form of hand-to-hand -hand combat in the sporting world. The spirit of Bushido brings together in the same ring the martial arts and kickboxing, wrestling and western-style boxing. This is not wrestling as you've known it before. This is for real. My name is Ted Pelk, and I'm going to take you through the rules. In professional wrestling rules, you may not use the pointy part of your elbow or punch to the head with a clenched fist. You are not allowed to headbutt in any way, and if any kind of butting occurs, it will be considered a foul and points will be deducted. When your opponent is on both hands and knees, you may not kick to the head. If and when your opponent raises even one hand and is able to defend himself, you are allowed to kick to any part of the body, including the head. When your opponent has both knees and both hands on the ground, you may not kick to the head, but you can kick anywhere else. Four points are deducted when a suplex results in a count. Three points for a knockdown. And one point for a suplex. You can break a submission hold by escaping to the rope, but one point will be deducted. Bouts can end in KO, TKO, or submission. Gary Albright of the USA makes his pro wrestling debut here in Shitsuoko. Where our commentators are five times world karate champion Jeff Thompson, and our technical expert is Ted Pell. First up on the card, kickboxing, Makoto Oe versus Merv Winnen. Kiyoshi Tamura versus Yuko Miyato. Gary Albright up against Yoji Anjo. And Nakano and Yamazaki versus Scott and Takata. But first, a kickboxing match. Merv Winnen fighting out of Vancouver, Canada, coming in at 144 pounds. He comes from the same gym as Juan Arlano, always last opponent. In the blue corner is UWF International's Makoto Oe, coming in at 140 pounds. Okay, five three-minute rounds of kickboxing. With Makoto Oe in the, the blue corner, and Merv Winon in the red corner. In Winon's corner, you can hear his corner man saying, stick and move, stick and move. I don't actually think that's going to work against Oe. I think he's proved his caliber in earlier bouts. This is one explosive fighter. Yeah, but you really don't want to be a stationary target for always low kicks. Can't afford to take too many of those. Winon seems to have the right strategy, though. He's got, he seems to have a reach advantage as well. You notice it's interesting. Oe is a southpaw, and um, Merv is fighting orthodox style. And that's why Oe's left leg is cocked back, and he's in a better position to throw a left low kick than he is to throw a right low kick, which he would have to switch his stance. So by continually moving to the left, Winnen is actually taking a lot of zip out of Oe's ki left kick. Like right there, he threw a left kick, but since he's moving to the left, it's taking away some of Oe's power. I don't know how long it'll work because right now, Oe is taking control of the ring. He's in the center and it's Winnen circling him. If he has enough stamina to keep this up five rounds, okay, but uh, we'll see. Well, I think already Oe is beginning to show his authority. Every single punch and kick or knee strike isn't wasted all precision proofed within the target once he homes in he's there as you can see oh he, he's just like a hitman but self-inflicted sweep there well when and went for a low kick and um he put a little bit too much power in there and he missed knocked himself off balance a lot of movement a lot of stalking Winnen seems to have good boxing ability, but the kicks don't seem to be too evident at the moment. Which is very common for Western fighters. You tend to see Western fighters stronger on the upper body, while you see, tend to see Oriental fighters strong on the lower body, so usually the dominant kickers. With the combination of the two proving to be a complete fighter. And this is another one of those many scenarios where we see the Oriental fighter 
being the dominant kicker and the Western fighter being definitely the dominant boxer. But then again, Owed just got in a left jab. I think we've, I think we've yet to see Oye really warm to his task. As you say, he tends to just weigh his opponent up. Once he has done that, it's all over pretty, pretty quickly. Be interesting to see how Winnan survives. Oh, is not throwing too many kicks. I don't know if he's just holding back and trying to wear, wear Winnan down. Ooh. But sooner or later, he's Winnan keeps on turning to the left. He's going to have to switch his stance and maybe cut off the ring. Yeah, and he seems to be cutting off Winnan's movement, getting to work on the legs. But you notice there again, Oe was kicking with the left low kick, and Winnan is continually circling to the left. The judges obviously saw Oe being the dominant fighter in there, and he's four points ahead. They've taken four points off of Winnan. Winnan beginning to show a slight is. sign of blood on his nose as he goes back to his corner. There it is. He totally missed him and knocked himself off balance. Into round four. Interesting to see if Winnan can survive. Really sort of <laughs> locked into one another there. I'm interested to see what Merv Winner comes up with. Interesting combination, but didn't seem to hurt Oi at all. Oh, no, there we go. The left leg starts going to work. Winner in trouble. Merv, Merv should be going with his upper hand combinations right now. He shouldn't. He shouldn't be trying to kick Oe or anything. He should just go with what he's, what he can do best. But Winner's punches aren't even finding targets. And as I say with Oi, minimal wastage, maximum effect here. And look at that body punch. Speed, precision, timing, and recoil. But Winnin is has lost a lot of the authority that he had in the opening round. His punches don't seem to have as much zip as they did. No, and there's oh. that there's that punch that comes with such speed. It looks like a punch and forearm there. But it, it is sh sheer speed of it. But it always seems to still have his breath. Winnin looks like he's spinning, getting burned out. Spinning reach hand. That's more of a desperate, desperate attack there by Winnin. And that's what you get for letting your opponent take control of the ring and continually having to circle around. It burns out a lot of energy. Good strategy in the early rounds, but of no use whatsoever if you don't make it count. Too many punches being expelled here. Those spinning back fists that he's throwing right now. Ooh, that left leg does not go to work when all he wants it to. Those spinning back fists that Merv is throwing right now, even if he connects to the head, it really does, has little meaning. Always, always lands with a... Oh, it lands with another jab. He continues, continues to stick him with a jab. Boom! Ooh, that Beautiful was a high kick right on the side of the head. No. And that was with a shin, too. I mean, I'll be surprised if Quinn gets up from that. That just found its target. He didn't even seem to be looking at his target when they let that kick go. The leg just seemed to find its way there. But Quinn the showing a lot of parties up again. Oh, yeah, game, but. Only a matter of time. Call it courage, call it stupidity. I don't know what it is, but he's up again and he's fighting back. Well, certainly seems to be showing some courage here. Always sticking to his Muay Thai style and doing very well. And another good low kick there by Oi. Merv Winnin's getting tired. He keeps on clinching him. You know, see, he got in a headlock and he's trying to hang on. And he's backing up right now. He wants a breather, but always not backing off. Mm -mm. And the punches are becoming late, but he's looking to his corner. That's a sure sign. Uh, he's just tired right now. Doesn't want to know. Boy, just looking for that opening. And oh, when it comes. And he survives another round. See a 16 point different in Oi's favor. A, a bridge too far? Let's watch that knockout. Boom. Oof. Knocked him off his feet. Hey. Round five then. Last, of them. Last and final round. Merv Winnan looking to, I suppose, in his case, with such a gap, looking for a bit of self respect. If he can survive this bout, that would have been an achievement, huh? Oh, it doesn't really have to look to knock him out. All he has to do is survive this round, and uh, the, the match will be awarded to him. But I don't know if he wants to do that. Maybe he wants to go for the KO. 
Now, I think, I think Oye is demonstrated in all abouts we've seen in previous programs. It is a man who likes to finish the job. Still light on the, light on his feet and wants to get involved. Eager, eager, eager. Excellent stamina, Oye has. Still nimble and light. That's why he hasn't exerted much effort. He's just staying, staying there. And he doesn't exert effort when it's not necessary. Right now, Merv is just trying to throw anything. And <laughs> there you go. He's going to hitting. work now. Merv Winnan showing excellent resilience here. Oh, he's still looking for that opening. It's like a predator. And it's finding oh. his way now. The kick and punch combination. Beautiful left straight. Merv Winnan still getting an uppercut. Finding the floor, but I'm sure he'll be up. It's only about 30 seconds left in this last round. Merv's going to have to show something now. He should just... He's, he's going to have to show something. He can't just keep backing up like this. But... Oh, he's, oh, he's almost ruthless oh, pursuit of a, of a win here. Oh, he's very careful, though. He's, he doesn't want to run into a knockout and have, like, a last-minute upset happen right now. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure I agree, but that left leg still seems to be wanting to do the damage. Merv winning. Going for the self-respect, and Oi, as I said, caution to the win, but he must be careful, as we said earlier. He, 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 can, if he, he shouldn't get too overconfident. If he gets overconfident and rushes in, he might get caught with a uppercut or something. He's got to be careful of that. Approaching the final stages of this fight, and Mike can only sense that Oi will still go for the for the knockout. And for, for Merv Winnan, it's a case of just hanging on. Oh, and there's beautiful sound. knee to the head. What a beautiful strike. No, but referee didn't seem to agree. There's no count. He that wasn't a knockdown. He scored that he didn't score that as a knockdown. That was a slip, he's saying. Some slip to me. Winning very tired. He's having trouble getting up right now. But showing amazing courage. Not those, many. Low, those low kicks are taking their toll right now. And there we have it. We know Oi is the winner there. We can see by the points. 40 points to 22. Convincing victory? Yeah, there was no doubt about it. Oi was definitely the dominant fighter in this fight. And then those kicks and punches, dead on target. There's the winner, Makoto Oi. Next up is Kiyoshi Tamura versus Yuko Miyato. Fighting out of the red corner is Kiyoshi Tamura, coming in at six feet tall, 200 pounds, probably the dominant submission wrestler. In the blue corner is Yuko Miyato coming in at 200 pounds. I expect him to come out with strikes. Okay, both men shake hands, go back to their corners. Tamura in the red corner, Miyato in the blue. Scheduled for 45 minutes, 15 points. Both these fighters establishing a fair old reputation on UWFI. One thing we mustn't forget are there are no rounds in this. There's no rounds in the sporting contest. They go until there's a winner. This is, this is what makes it one of the most toughest, most demanding sports you've ever seen. Probably the toughest and most demanding sport you've ever seen. They say they are. Well, lots, lots of fighting systems always claim to be the best, but I think the good thing about the UWFI system is it, it's so complete. As you say, you have complete fighters who can actually throw, kick, punch, and, and show great spirit. Each person has their own style, like, like def in this fight right here, Tamura is definitely more confident with his submission wrestling skills. He, he, he's more confident on the ground. 
where Miato is probably in this situation, he's more confident with uh, his striking techniques. But take nothing away from Tamura. He knows his kicking. I, would, I mean, tomorrow, tomorrow's confident full stop. I mean, he's got his abilities. But the thing that impresses me about him is he just seems to have that little fire in his belly. Not saying the rest don't have a fire in their belly. But good skill all the same. You say fast, furious, and skillful. Oh. Oh. Miyato takes him down. He's not exactly scared to take on Tamura um, in wrestling. No, and as you say, he's still, he's still got the ability when they do stand toe-to-toe -to, -toe to be able to trade. And right now, the Japanese crowd is quiet. They're just standing on their toes in anticipation for a quick give up. Well, I'm not now sure. Tamura, he's got a straight arm bar on him. That, huh. that could be trouble. Could have been trouble. One point in it as Miyato goes for the ropes and Sanctuary. Tamura seems a little peeved. You notice the Japanese crowd actually clapped when Miyato went for the rope and lost a point. They, it's sanctuary over here. When you go for the rope, it doesn't mean that you're trying to evade the action. It means that you're trying to continue the fight because the crowd is a very educated crowd and they realize that once an, a submission hold is applied on you perfectly, there's no way you can escape. It's leverage. I don't care how much strength you have. Once you apply a submission hold, there's no way you can get out. The only way you can get out is by escaping to the rope and you lose a point, but the action continues or you just give up, and that's the end of the match, and your opponent is awarded the victory. We're shared laurels at the moment. Miyato in the black, black tights, Tamura in the red trunks. <laughs> Referee still looking for a submission there. Both wrestlers looking for an opening right now. None really having the upper hand Oh. There it is. Wada is pointing the shoot sign, which means that Tamura is applying a dangerous submission hold on Miyato, which could mean possible danger. Wada is sticking out his left hand with the... Now he's doing the red... His right hand, which has the red wristband, which, mean, which is asking Tamura, do you submit? Tamura looks in trouble to me. Miyato looking to gain that advantage. Oh, oh that brilliant was a lock. beautiful reversal. You notice Miyato was trying to go for some sort of hammer lock at that point. And Tamura just turned around, reversed it into a quick Achilles tendon hold. That was so quick, I couldn't even see really what happened. Excellent move there. There was such agility. Amazing speed and agility. Oh. And then again, a heel <laughs> hold from Miyato. And Tamura gets a point taken off for his rope escape. Well, it's even Stevens. And as I say, a very evenly, evenly poised match at this moment in time. Oh, beautiful kicks. Now we see Miyato working on his strengths. Tamura manages to block all those, but he can't do that too much. He has to come out on offense. You can't just be a defensive fighter and survive in this. And going back to his groundwork. He, he doesn't want to be standing up. Tamura wants him down. Tamura actually beginning to mature. The more we see him in in these in these uh, in the programs as they progress and as a series, we're actually seeing him become a fighter in his own right. Well, he's training hard. These these fighters, all of these fighters, train like anywhere from five to eight, ten hours a day. Excellent cartwheeling straight into um, a scissors hold there by Tamura. Actually, more than the scissor hold, he's what Tamura's doing is he's trying to go for a sleeper hold, a choke hold. The reason why he has the body scissors on him is so that he can't roll it up. But you see Miyato turned around the scissor hold, which was holding him, and it got an ankle lock. That's the same move that he beat Nakano with last week. Referee Wada was looking for the shootout sign there. And another rope escape by Tamura. Yeah. Miyato tried to go for a, um, an arm drag, a single arm throw. Not successful. Oh, oh, beautiful that takeover. Beauty. But that was just a setup for a submission. It's not a bad setup. 
Now he got an arm lock on him. And he's in the center of the ring. So could be an advantage. One. He's trying to break the hat. Ooh. If he can break the grip, he can do it. Yes, he broke the grip, but Miyato managed to get to the rope quickly. Brilliant action there. 13-13. Level scoring, and there we see it. Tomorrow really going for it there. He's, he's trying to break the grip because he knows if he breaks those, the grip of the two hands, he has it. Oh, beautiful. Ooh. That came from within. Miyato pulled that kick from the floor straight through him. Tamura there. Kick. Oof. But Tamura's up. Well, it's all his weight in it. Oh, there it is, the roll of Savat. What a spin straight through Tamura. And look at the gap there. Tamura in serious trouble right now. Oh, I'm not sure if he can recover from another one of those kicks. Referee has to be on top of this. Miyato going Front for the suplex. kill now. Great stuff. Oh, yeah. And the referee's looking for the shootout. He may well get it. Miyato might get it. Oh, he makes the ropes. It looked like he was in the middle of the ring, but I guess he was close enough to the ropes to be able to escape. That was that was a modified Boston Crab right there. Single leg Boston Crab. Seven points in it. Miyato clearly beginning to take and assert himself in this bout. But you never know with Tamura. I mean, he is a resilient competitor. Oh, he never gives up. This guy's really taken a lot of punishment and come back and won a lot of matches. Good stuff. Oh, yes. He's going for it. He's whether, going for the cross lock. Whether it's in Japanese or English, if you're a fighter, the language is the same. The leg cross lock, known in Japan as the Hisa Juji Gatame. Right, well, I'm glad you're pronouncing that and not me. And <laughs> now we're getting at his mate for the ropes. Miyato actually made it to the ropes. Six points in it. Miyato leading. Miyato leading by six points. Tamara's got to do something. Oh, yes. Good punch by Miyato. Then he tries another arm drag. But Oof. Tamara reverses it with a chokehold. Miyato trying to turn it around with an ankle lock. And now he's going for the Hisajuji Gatame, or the leg cross lock. <laughs> Tamura showing his good tip. Seems to really be upset now. Tamura doesn't want to lose. Miyato is uh, considered to be an upper level wrestler, where Tamura is an up and comer. And only three points in it. Tamura really wants to show something. He wants to climb the ladder. Tamura can come back from this. It would be a significant victory, but Miyato certainly slapping him around. Tamura wants to beat this upper-ranking fighter. Oh, yes. Once again, he has the chokehold. He could well end up creating an upset here, but... There's the ankle lock by Miyato again. So skillful, this. Before you're looking at one element of action, you're at the other part. Oh, yes, back again. There he is again, action. and he gave up. My word, what a shot, and what a victory for Kiyoshi Tamura. Excellent sleeper choke hold right in the middle of the ring, no escape. Coming up next, a chance to see making his first appearance, the American wrestler Gary Albright versus Yoji Anjo. Bout seems to have started already. Fighting out of the red corner is Gary Albright coming in at 350 pounds, the three-time All-American Super Heavyweight Amateur Wrestling Champion. Fighting out of the blue corner is his opponent tonight, Yoji Anjo, coming in at only 210 pounds. Well, all I can say is I can see some fireworks. I wouldn't be checking out Anjo. I'd actually be checking out Gary Albright because he looks mean. I don't know what to expect from Gary. Um, he has an excellent amateur record. 
He's a national freestyle and Greco-Roman champion. He's a senior open freestyle national champion, a USA Junior World Freestyle champion, and he's actually beaten the Los Angeles Olympic gold medalist Jeff Platonic on four different occasions. He's the three-time All-American Super Heavyweight Amateur Wrestling Champion. So, an exciting bout in prospect here. <laughs> Gary Albright saying, come on, let's go. And, and those uh, low kicks, he's blocking those low kicks pretty good and he's moving on in. He knows how to use his weight. He's going to use his weight to the, his advantage. Oh, oh. Gary Albright is here to definitely play and stay. He looks like he's serious about winning, doesn't he? Absolutely. Come on, he said. Let's go. And Anja looks confused. He kicks him and... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> hey, we have seen... Anjo does not know what he's dealing with here. Never seen anything like it before. Anjo is not like a little kid. I mean, this guy weighs over 200 pounds. He's weighed 210 pounds. He just picked him up and threw him down like a sack of potatoes. I don't know what that end means on his, his uh, leotard, but... I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to Belly to belly guess. suplex. With a sleeper hold now. I think there may well be a serious challenger from the western corner here. Right in, in the middle Albright. of the ring. Anjo in trouble with that sleeper choke hold. And surely he must be giving away too much weight to get caught in a situation like this. No, he doesn't want to be in the middle of the ring with Gary Albright trying to apply a submission. I don't want to be in the middle of the ring with Gary Albright trying to apply a submission. That guy looks serious. He's like, mean, he's big, and he's got the ability. Gary really hasn't shown any striking ability. Being an amateur wrestler, he probably doesn't have punches or kicks, but it doesn't seem like he really needs them, does it? I was just about to say, and he knows where the ropes are. One point in it, and an exciting bout in prospect. And actually, now Anjo is one point in the lead. He's actually leading this fight, although I, would, I wouldn't want to be him right now. Anjo really getting into this, Shane. Good spirit. He's trying oh. to chop, chop him down with those low kicks. And Gary Albright isn't even flinching. He's a tough customer. Oof. Look at that strength. No, I think there is someone to seriously start challenging the likes of the Takadas and the Anjos and even the Tamuras. It'll be interesting to see how he fares against them. Do they make the ropes? Anjo will be a happy man. Oh, the crowd don't like it. And Anjo doesn't like it. <laughs> Ooh. Not even a flinch. Good kicks, but Gary's so big, those middle kicks don't seem to be bothering him. What Anjo should do is stick to the low kicks. I think Anjo's, Anjo's looking for some um, assistance from the ropes. I'm not sure if he can get any leverage there, but... What Gary has to do is he can't be standing up like that. He has to move on in and use his wrestling ability. Tries a knee, but gets caught. <laughs> and Gary Albright actually getting and he just picks him up and takes him right down. Have you uh, uh, seen anything uh. like this? No, this is certainly one for the books. Gary Albright certainly making his presence felt in his first appearance here on UWFI. And Anjo is possibly, unfortunately, going to be the victim of his first appearance. And now Gary Albright definitely has the advantage. He's on top. He's got all of his 355, 350 pounds on top of Anjo right now. Anjo just probably trying to get his thoughts together right now, trying to think what he's trying to do. He managed to slide out of that. He's trying to go for a submission hold. I can't see it. Can't see a submission coming that easy from this guy. But Gary grabs his ankle, and Anjo is once again in a lot of trouble. Gary Albright showing true grit and resilience here. Anjo should not be on the ground. He should not be trying to match wrestling skills with 
somebody of Gary's caliber. I don't think he should be matching any skills with Gary Albright. <laughs> there again. Makes for the ropes and gets there. Oh, They're oh, even oh, now. Kicker. Doesn't Pilot look like leads. an even fight, Pilot but 14 to 14. As we can see here, I mean, every move that Anjo tries on Gary Allwright, he just he just seems to just oh he just seems impervious to any of it. Another kick got caught. And now Anjo him. has powerful kicks and he's just catching them. Catching them, he's absorbing them and showing no pain whatsoever. It's like fly swatting at the moment. I mean, incredible. He's taken a hell of a lot of punishment so far. I just said earlier that he shouldn't be. <coughs> Anjo looked out the belly back where suplex. He was. I just said earlier that Anjo shouldn't be on the ground matching wrestling skills with Gary, but I don't know. He shouldn't be standing up either with Gary's high speed suplexes. Well, he can't go on the floor. He can't stand up. Is there a place for Anjo in this bout? I really don't believe I've ever seen any kind of suplexes like this before where so quick and strong and he has all his weight into it. Referee looking for the shootout then, didn't get it. Anjo still putting in a game performance. He's trying to go for the shoulder lock armbar right now, but such a big arm to have to pull out. <laughs> and look at Anjo's arms, they're not small, they're not chicken wings. Wada with a shoot sign, asking Gary if he wants to give up. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, almost had one okay. in the head, he blocked it. <laughs> Gary Albright almost sees me saying, hold on, let me get up and you can kick me. <laughs> Look. Excellent oh. knee by Gary. Oh, oh, oh. Perfect oh, German suplex <laughs> right on the back of the head. <laughs> Andro is stunned, he's out of it right now. <laughs> one, and he's out two, of it and out of the game three. by the looks He's of not going to oh. get back up from that Five. one. Hey, no, that looks like serious fatigue. Look at this again. Right on the back of the head. Boom. Ooh. And after a very good knee strike by Gary Albright. But he's up again, but he's out. Still in Ooh. the... Ooh, what a... Oh, vicious One, forearm. Two, oh, three, a big lead now. Four, big lead being five. developed by Gary Albright. Could we see the... I, I mean, don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. And there we have it, there we have it. Gary Albright, the winner. And the main event is Tatsuo Nakano and Kazuo Yamazaki going up against Billy Scott and Nobuhiko Takara. In the red corner, we have the team of Kazuo Yamazaki coming in at 230 pounds and Tatsuo Nakano at 215. And their opponents tonight, Billy Scott, Coming in at 215 pounds and UWFI's Nobuhiko Takara at 230 pounds. No love lost between these gentlemen as they go back to their corners. The, what looks to be a potentially explosive bout with Nakano and Yamazaki in the red corner, Billy Scott and Takada in the blue corner. And it opens up with Nakano versus Billy Scott. Billy Scott's really proven himself in this sport. The last fight he had against Yamazaki was an excellent show of courage, Ooh. excellent show of speed, agility, and technique. For the viewers, each team has 21 points. And Nakano certainly getting grips with Biddy Scott, who you said earlier, he's giving good account of himself in earlier bouts and seems to really want to establish himself. Oh, yes. Oh, he takes him all down. But that was more, he dropped him on his back. Um, all of these guys are wrestlers. They're used to falling. They're used, they know how to break falls. In order to have a throw that means something, you have to do a suplex, which you get a point taken off for. 
and that means you have to drop the guy on the back of his head and his neck. Whether you can break and, fall or not, that looks painful. And Billy Scott was going for it. He didn't get a suplex point. It, it hit him on the back. It didn't hit him on the back of the neck. Going for it again, but yes. Billy Scott has, ha, has to watch out for those kicks. And here comes a hell of a fighter with great kicking ability. And the Gano seems almost upset that he's got to leave. And this is the second time that Billy Scott is going up against Yamazaki, this time in a tag match. It'd be interesting to see what happens. Oh, excellent. Great fight last time. I, I, I only anticipate a great fight this time also. Do you think the fighters actually look for re revenge from their individual bouts in the team tag? Well, I know I would. Yeah, I suppose I'll... I think I would as well. But that's what adds to the overall excitement. I mean, not one of the bouts I've seen has actually been boring. It, there is either a build-up and a, a, a motive to every fighter's madness. Each and every fighter is out to prove something. Billy Scott really beginning to make his, a name for himself here on UWFI. He's got Yamazaki down now. He's trying to apply some kind of a submission. I doubt it. He has the leg caught, but he's, I think he's going for a chokehold right now. If he fails to do that, he'll probably try to go for an arm lock. Ooh, the kick nearly came a begging. But Billy shouldn't try to kick and punch too much. He should stick to his good wrestling abilities. Ho -ho! The big man coming. The top two UWF international fighters going up against each other for the first time. This has got to be an explosive exchange. Both men, UWFI stylists, both men knowing and actually using all aspects of fighting. Ooh. There you see it. Yamazaki getting the first, first draw of explosive energy there. Laying into Takada, and I don't think he'll take it. For one minute, stepping back. Both men equally matched. Yamazaki may be the dominant kicker. It's hard to tell yet, but let's see. Well. Well, like I said, ooh, ooh. well, you predicted, there we see it. That's one of the best kicks I've seen thrown in this series. And Takata's right back up. Ooh, maybe, yes. he, maybe he ought to just stay down for a while and, you know, just to get his breath back, but... I was amazed he got back really up from that. really stunned him. But he's ooh, up. Ooh, he hit him oh. right one, in the jaw two, with an excellent heel three, strike. Four, he five. smashed Yamazaki in the chin with the heel of his hand and i'm sure that's not going to be quits there it is and that can be just as powerful as a boxer's punch oh uh, no i felt that one from where i was sitting thank you so he's in a sense he's gotten him back they're still going at each other and even stevens on the scoreboard yamazaki trying to go for a belly to back suplex but takata reversing it with a straight leg bar you wouldn't actually think there were two other fighters waiting to get into that ring, would you? No, this is pretty exciting as a singles match. And some interesting markings on Takada's back. Any significance? That is um, mock Sebastian treatment. That is um, oriental medicine. And they do that to calm down nerves and um, to like treat um, injuries. So suction pads, a bit like Western yes. acupuncture. Yes. Okay. I mean, you you feel that something's gonna give at any minute. But, you know, I'd I'd need all the acupuncture and moxibustion I could get after taking kicks and punishment like those, and <laughs> especially the ones that Yamazaki's dishing out right now. Okay, the change of tag. The card. And this should prove to be an interesting fight too. We've, oh. seen, we've, we've seen Takata go up against Nakano before in an earlier show. Ooh. Takata's taking a fair bit of punishment. 
I think those um, kicks that Yamazaki dished out on him earlier are still bothering him a little bit. Maybe Takata should just go in and tag with Billy Scott. A little bit. Do you think that there's an element of him not wanting Billy Scott to get in on some of the action? I don't know. I think he's he may well. Hurt. And he's still not past Green. No tag. Oh, I think he's got something to prove. And he's showing it now. No, Yama. Oh, what? Nakano's stunned right now. How did he come back from that? Nakano. Mr. Durable. Look at this. Look at those kicks. He's blocking them, but, I mean, they're so powerful. Oh. Look at the contraction on Takada's left leg as he hits. Now, both men have tagged in while we were watching the replay. Yamazaki's going for an Achilles tendon hold on Billy Scott. And Billy Scott looks hell-bent on stopping him. Bad position for Billy Scott. They're right in the middle of the ring. Referee Wada looking for the shoot sign. If Yamazaki manages to apply the leverage perfectly, this is going to be the end of the match. Yeah, it looks pretty intense to me. Can Billy hold on? He oh, gets to the rope. Brilliant. Made it to the rope. Sanctuary. 17 points all in an exciting bout of tag team. And the crowd applauds Billy for wanting to continue the fight. Ooh. Vicious low kick by Yamazaki. Trying to take away his leg. And he's going for a throw, yes, goes Ooh. for a backdrop. And Billy loses a point for that as well. Here we see it again, up and away. Didn't seem to hurt Billy a lot. And Billy striking that pose that Takata has made his own for me. Billy with a Boston Crab trying to drag, you see, you notice he's trying to drag Yamazaki out into the middle of the ring. And he has his weight on it. And he's made it to the ropes. Crowd loving this. Very even fight. And back to Mr. Resilient, Nakahano. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Belly to back suplex. Ooh. Not much effect. He comes back with some Ooh. kicks right in the face. Brilliant. His own belly to back German <laughs> suplex. And um, Billy's not having any of it either. Look at this. Here it is, the German suplex. Boom, right on the back of the head, but both fighters tag in, and once again, it's Takata versus Yamazaki. Ooh, good kick by Takata. Oh, yes, picking Great. up the pace now. Combination of this. punches. Rapido, rapido. Look at that. Oh, oh Takata's in No, he's in control. Yamazaki's down. Down. He's getting a standing count. Be interesting to see how Yamazaki fares from this little onslaught by Takada. Oh, yes. Beautiful spinning back kick to what Takada's head. A kick. And he wasn't Ta expecting that one. Takada doesn't know where that came from. But he's taking that rest. Well, all I can say to you is I've seen kicks delivered in my time, and I don't know how he got up from that one, but he's taking that well-earned rest. Look at this. Boom. That was in. Right with a heel. 365 degrees, not 360, but look at this. Once again, both fighters tag out, and it's Tatsuo Nakano versus Billy Scott. He has a straight arm bar on him right he's now. He's looking for that rope. He's looking for that rope, and he's found it. Still only one point in it. Amazing match. Look at the way he just looked for that rope and he went for it. Yes! Yes! Billy Scott holding on for dear life. He's looking for that, looking for that shoot sign. Right now, Billy has the advantage. He had a leg cross lock, and, but now he's going for the heel hold on Yamazaki. Make for the ropes again. And it's still an even fight. And a tag, and Takata looking to finish it. Look at this. Ooh. Takes Yamazaki over. He's That's not letting him get to the tag. He wants to finish him. With a sleeper hold. 
Referee Wada looking for the shoot sign from Yamazaki. Will he get it? Dangerously close there. The rope saves the day. Sanctuary for Yamazaki as he tags in for Nakano. <laughs> Would you Bin say Nakano's a little anxious to get in on the action? Yeah, I think so. And I think Billy Scott's equally willing to get in on the action, as we can see here. Brilliant stuff by both teams here. As you said earlier, the fighters will only use the ropes when absolutely necessary. Even with a shoot sign there, Billy Scott still not taking the well, option of the Well, he's in ropes. trouble, but... Like, Bravery? you know, when you... He, well, you go for the rope escape and you lose a point. You don't want to be losing too many of those points. Oh, Nakano actually clubbing him down. <laughs> and Billy Scott now returning the compliment. Yeah, but those are just aggravating Nakano. Well, Billy doesn't seem too worried about by it. Billy takes him down, looking for an opening. He shouldn't be trying to match striking skills with Nakano, though. Not sure if Nakano's looking for a tag or making for Sanctuary on the rope, then. But Yamazaki seems ready and willing. Better watch out for the kicks. Ooh! Ah, 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 ah. Billy Stone! One to the arm. That oh, is you it. Hear that that is out. Ooh. Three, Billy Scott gets up four, from that. Five, Good six, grief. Seven, Nothing rehearsed here, viewers. This is real. Look at this. This is genuine professional wrestling. Good grief. How he got up from that, I'll never know. Takata going for the straight leg bar on Yamazaki. Great entertainment. Close match. Look, one point in it. It's a good thing that Billy Scott was able to tag in with Takata. He was in trouble. Yamazaki tags to Nakano. Now Yamazaki in trouble. He tags to Nakano. Twenty-five minutes into the bout. Brief. 25 minutes of a 45 minute bout. Nakano just amply looking at Takano and saying, Is that all you've got to give me? This is genuine, real, legitimate professional wrestling at its best. Everything. You see all aspects of fighting going on in this ring right now. Oh, of that, I have no doubt. For the martial art purists, they may say, Well, it's not technically enough. It's not disciplined enough, but I, I have to say, coming from one of the martial arts disciplines, for those who want a real demonstration of overall fighting, I think that's what we have here now. Believe and me, these are a bunch of disciplined fighters. They have to go, not only do they have to fight, they have to go through the strenuous training regimen, and they have to go through the Japanese discipline system. And I'm sure we'll be able to take a look at behind the scenes uh, of the UWFI fighters sometime later in the series. There's much more than just fighting in the ring. This is a lifestyle for each and every one of the UWFI fighters. This is good stuff. So right now, Nakano is trying to set up for a suplex, but... He's not getting it. He's Takada seems to be no. willing, to, willing to take the advantage again. And he could well have... Yep, referee Wada looking for the shoot sign from Nakano, but not getting it. Takano looks as always as though he's almost tattooed. <laughs> now he's going for a leg lock. He's dragging him into the middle of the ring and hey, going for a Hey, once Takano gets there, you're on your way out. There's the shoot sign from referee Wada. And Nakano's in trouble because he's going for that rope. Sanctuary is but a grasp away he's dragging he's him into back, him back, back in the middle he doesn't want him to escape this time takata's going for broke he wants to finish this 
And Nakano making a desperate bid to reach Yamazaki. And, and he, he makes the tag. It. Brilliant. And still at eight points each. Takata did not want to go to uh, get up against Yamazaki when he was fresh. Oh no, as we can see, Yamazaki seems very much recovered. Yamazaki is not someone you want to go up when he, up to when he's fresh and you're tired out. Oof, Billy Scott seems to have got himself in a bit of trouble. Chicken wing Ooh. face lock. It's Yamazaki has applied the chicken wing face lock. Wada has the shoot sign. Yes, that's it. And all I can say is, look at this here. Billy Scott certainly is a lucky man because Yamazaki looked serious and was certainly going for the kill there. Right in the middle of the ring, who had a scissor lock on his stomach so he couldn't roll out. Because Absolutely no way to say. What a terrific fight. The winners then, Yamazaki and Nakano.